happening gang it's your boy retro back again with another reaction video yeah yeah uh today we're gonna be taking a look at this is a clip from fox news um this is joe rogan rips double standards on trump versus biden um speaking up on his indictment i'm, I'm just assuming um they would be up his you know what so <laughs> this is definitely gonna be interesting i love joe rogan's podcast he be going crazy on there talking about all the stuff that you know kind of just blows my mind aliens you know just far not even i want to say far-fetched but like he makes it seem like you know what i'm saying he makes it kind of makes it true to me you know but hey make sure i like this video subscribe to the channel yo let's get straight into it y'all we begin this first hour of fox and friends down in florida former president donald trump heads to a miami or heads down to miami today ahead of tomorrow's federal court hearing as he faces dozens of charges over his handling of classified documents i didn't hear anything about this this is uh, this is news to me both federal <laughs> and local authorities ramping up security measures as trump supporters are rallying around him jonathan sari is live outside the u.s district court building in south florida with the latest good morning to you jonathan Good morning, Steve Ainsley and Brian. Security is always tight around federal courthouses, but you can only imagine it rises to a much higher level when the defendant is a former U.S. president. The Washington Post is reporting law enforcement are actively monitoring online threats from extremist groups, monitoring their plans for rallies in the Miami area. One of them reportedly planned for outside the courthouse tomorrow and also bringing in additional officers. Mr. Trump has been in indicted on 37 counts related to the alleged mishandling of classified White House documents stored in various locations around his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida. The charges include 31 counts of willful retention of national defense information with other charges related to Mr. Trump's alleged efforts to conceal the documents from federal investigators. South Carolina Senator Lindsey... Good grief. 30 years. <laughs> Yo, that shit say... That's seven different, that's seven different, what the, f bro, what the hell, I, I'm just looking at the sentence, and that's, that's what, off a rip, that's what I'm looking at, like, how much time you gotta do for this type of crime, max 10 years on counts, number one through 32, count number 32 is a max sentence of 20 years, count number 33, max sentence, 20 years, we talking federal, by the way, y'all, you do all this time, uh, count number 34, 20 years, 35, 20 years, 36, 5 years, and 37, 5 years. Shit, y'all. That's a max that that that's a maximum of a hundred years altogether. What if they gonna do some adding, subtracting, or dividing on these, you know what I'm saying, these charges if it come out to be you know, on the bad end. Woo! As he Graham Ooh. says, although he does not like certain things the former president did, the charges against him go way too far. Hell President yeah, that's Trump will okay. have his day in court, but espionage charges are absolutely ridiculous. Whether you like Trump or not, he did not commit espionage. He did not disseminate, leak, or provide information to a foreign power or to a news organization to damage this country. He is not right. a spy. But Mr. Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr, says in this case, federal investigators were right to be concerned about how the former president was storing documents on military strategy and other sensitive information. It quickly became clear that what the government was really worried about were these classified and very sensitive documents. I was shocked by the degree of sensitivity of these documents and how many there were. And I think the counts under the Espionage Act uh, that he willfully retained those documents are solid counts. But I do think that even half well, what Andy McCarthy said, which is if even half of it is true, then he's toast. Mm. But some Republicans accuse the Justice Department of aggressively pursuing Mr. Trump while slow-stepping investigations into President Biden. Kentucky Congressman James Comer released True. more details about allegations from a confidential FBI source claiming that Mr. Biden fine. accepted money from a foreign national to influence policy decisions while Mr. Biden was serving as vice president. Oh, wait, what? The reason I think it's credible. Wait, Biden did what? Is this the same one where he took the, the bribe? 
This ain't the bribe shit. This is something different. Investigations into President Biden. Kentucky Congressman James Comer released more details about allegations from a confidential FBI source claiming that Mr. Biden accepted money from a foreign national to influence policy decisions while Mr. Biden was serving as vice president. The reason I think it's incredible, that. Trey, is because this was dated, this last 1023, in June or July of 2020, three years before anybody knew about the shell companies and knew that the Bidens were laundering money through six different American banks. In the 1023, the informant says that the payee alleges that he paid the bribe to the Bidens and, and that no one would ever find it because the way they set it up, they, they transferred the money through so many different banks, it would take 10 years for investigators to find out. At rallies. Nah, they devious with the shuffling it up. They shuffled the cards real nice, man. You'll never, I don't sneaky ass Biden is hot. Damn. And I would have never thought that, like, going into the, you know, the 2020 election, I would have never thought that Biden was, I, I mean, like, it, they didn't, in the media, they never put any of that, you know what I mean? All they said was Trump was bad, Biden was good, you know what I mean? That's crazy. And if, not to even mention, if this was, you know what I'm saying, Trump, they would have done their research. They definitely would have, you know, investigated into that and figured it, I don't care how many transactions between how many banks, they going to trail everyone and so they nail it come on now let's be real i don't man they are why are they so they're leaning on some people and then you know so hard on others i don't understand where you know Where's the divide? What's going on there? Over the weekend, Mr. Trump accused federal prosecutors of trying to suppress his political ambitions, but he says that will not deter him for his campaign for a second term in the White House. Back to you guys. And, and Jonathan, uh, you touched a little bit on this. You mentioned Donald Trump yesterday. Yesterday, he was on the radio with Roger Stone and called for protests uh, in advance and after uh, what happens at the courthouse behind you. Uh, I, I read the same article you did in the Washington Post. It talks a little bit about how law enforcement is a little worried about the fact that it sounds like one of the rallies is going to be thrown by the Proud Boys down there. Uh, that's right. Uh, according to the Washington Post article, the Proud Boys are uh, organizing a rally out uh, outside the courthouse here. And that's so who the hell are the Proud Boys? I want to know. Drop it in the comment section. I, I got a feeling it's a bad. They sound like the big, the, the uh, the big bad wolf in them, yo. They said uh, they, they, they sources say that the Proud Boys are gonna be there, like Oscar Proud, Penny Proud. What are we talking about? Certainly raises the level of concern when Mr. Trump was calling uh, for protests. At least in the soundbite I heard, he also specified peaceful protests. But the concern yes. among law enforcement is that if some of these more extreme groups get involved, the rallies may be less than peaceful. And that's exactly right, Jonathan. <laughs> thank you very much. Also, Roger Stone encouraged the demonstrators to re remain peaceful and legal. Well, they have amped up security down mm -hmm. in Miami because of this. They're monitoring some threats online and some some talk online. He's traveling from Bedminster to, down to, to Miami, as we've been reporting today. Secret Service, it's being reported. They were trying to tell him, don't go down today, let's go, go tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Right, and on Tuesday, after his indictment at about 3 o'clock, we don't know if it's going to be a mugshot, you know, it'll be fingerprinted, there'll be no cameras in the courtroom. But we do know about 8.15, he's going to give a speech. Uh, so that's going to be uh, big news. Uh, and he's saying, look, Joe Biden's looking to jail his number one opponent that's beating him in the polls and is the uh, winning big time for the for the nomination. Both things of relate is true. And it seems as though after the New York case, you got a huge bunch of bump, uh, bump in the polls. Seems like it's going to happen again. Uh, there's a lot of people, as Lindsey Guerin brought up yesterday, as and William Barr said it. Listen, he said, I want to bat with you over other situations. I've been there with you before. I think you've been un unjustly targeted, and I've said that. But this case, there's a lot there. Lindsey Graham says, it might be true. There's a lot there. But people have shut off ever since 2015, seeing from the day he won and the Russia investigation, trying to delegitimize him, what happened after uh, 2020, the doubts people had about the election. And now you hit him with the indictment with Alvin Bragg, which is a farce. And then this, if it does indeed have substance, people have shut off. So half the country has shut off this indictment. You can't convince them, at least half the country. Well, 110 years. See, that's what I'm saying. 110 years. I don't know, man. I know, like, 
most of us are on the, you know, like you said, you can't convince us that, you know, this isn't a big ploy by the Democrats, by, you know, Joe Biden, you know, to kind of sabotage, uh, you know, Trump's, you know, next potential candidacy or, you know, even running for presidency. So I, I know a lot of us are thinking that, but I don't know, man, something in the, like in the back of my mind is just like it's it's yelling, it's screaming like this is Trump's cabin or cabinet uh, doing doing all this like they're I think like Trump hit the documents or not even hit them but like kept the documents I feel like this was like structured so well that like he knew he would get off for this like he got all the documents he kept them he declassified them which he knew he could do um and they kind of came after me I think he knew they would come after him and and this whole you know just everything that's getting blown up I feel like it's it's creating a, a, like an extra hype behind his his next you know time running for presidency like everyone's like will he run will he not run every the question is will you vote if he goes to jail will you vote if he doesn't you know what i mean like it i feel like it's boosting him so much more like they said he has supporters outside of the damn courtroom hyping him up you know what I mean? so like I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is you know trump's people behind this i don't know I, I, who y'all think let me know in the comment section y'all y'all with my my theory or yeah, with the you know the media, what they're projecting that this is all Biden. I, that's just I, maybe I'm crazy. It's indictment. You can't convince them. At least have to come. Well, 110 years he's he's facing for having documents in his house that Joe Biden also had the same documents, classified documents in his garage next to his Corvette. And mm. Hillary Clinton is is bleach bidding and using hammers to destroy her evidence. It's just such a double standard. And that's what the New York Post is is writing about this morning. Here's the headline. What about the Bidens? Trump was indicted. But what about the Bidens? And it talks about the Corvette and his garage and uh, just the double standard. And that's what Lindsey Graham was focusing on. Yeah, he might have done something wrong. He should have he should have returned these documents when asked about it. Right. Never should have taken them. But neither should uh, the vice, the former vice president. Neither should have Joe Biden. Joe Biden was a vice president and maybe a senator when he had some of mm -hmm. these documents right absolutely it, to a lot of people it looks like there's an uneven standard of justice for the republicans luckily the republicans in the oversight and judiciary are looking into it uh there was a uh, we have a quote from miranda divine she writes in the new york post today a little bit, bit about this biden laughs off fbi bribery claims as evidence against him and hunter mounts because he it, said show me the money right, where's exactly. the money but, you know, uh, Stephen Nelson, he knows they can't find uh, it. That particular uh, press event on Thursday. It's interesting. O.J. Simpson, of all people, yesterday came out and he said, look, I've had some of the world's greatest lawyers. I've had Johnny Cochran and I've had Alan Dershowitz. And this is the advice that I would give to Donald Trump that I got from my lawyers. And he said, don't talk about the case publicly. Don't do interviews about the case. He said, quote, I don't know if Donald's lawyers are stressing this to him, but if not, they should be fired and he should sue them. So uh, O.J. Simpson right. is OJ essentially Simpson saying advice. Donald Trump right. has got to stop talking about the case because he'll just dig a so, hole for I think it was Joe Concha yeah. this morning on um, Fox and Friends First. That's made my O.J. Point, and it's so obvious, but it just dawned on me. He said, you know, in other countries, we see political opponents get thrown in prison because of something that they have done in the past or just as a way a corrupt government a banana mm -hmm. republic and we've seen that down in venezuela and caracas we've, we've seen that in other countries and that's what's happening here it seems andy mccarthy uh, who said if the if the half of this is true the president's in real trouble he also said jim jordan should demand as chairman of the oversight committee an update on what's happened with joe biden because you can't sit there and if jack smith's going to come out and says no one's above the law and equal justice for all People don't buy that, whether you love Jack Smith or not. A lot of he's had some problems in the past in this prosecution. Look at uh, Governor McDonald over in Virginia. So having said that, if you want equal justice, then just just show me the equal justice on Joe Biden. And if you tell me you're not done, how about an update? Because a lot's at stake here. Meanwhile, Joe Rogan picked out something that's been abundantly true, is that Joe Biden's been lying his entire professional life. He's been lying about the speeches he had. He's been lying about his grades in college. He's been lying about the double major he never had, his athletic scholarship he didn't get. And he goes way, way back, and it's continuing today. He brought that up on his podcast. All the f 
stuff with his son and the, the the ties to ukraine and china and the money Hunter Biden. The family that got, they got paid millions of dollars and everyone's trying to obscure it because well it's better than trump better than trump if that guy was a republican they would be up his oh. ass with a microscope i know it is unbelievable it's they true. went with this corrupt career politician yeah i mean it's wild stuff man the media is overwhelmingly left-leaning and if you have a left-leaning politician or a left-wing democratic politician and then you have this media that yeah. essentially works to support that person. I mean, they, they ignore any information that leads to distrust in the government or distrust in this administration or distrust mm -hmm. in this, this party, this political party. Yeah, it's a dark arts, man. Mm -hmm. Yesterday on Fox News Sunday, which was the same show that Bill Barr said if half the stuff is true about uh, Trump, he's toast. Uh, Donald Trump's attorney, Alina Haba, who's not representing him on the Dacalago case, uh, said that uh, Mr. Trump would soon make a determination whether or not he wants a speedy trial, which he is entitled to. And also she said that, uh, that she did not envision in any world would he ever no. take a plea deal. He want to draw like, this out. In no world will he ever want a speedy trial, ever. Yeah. This guy will drag it out, and he should, as long as he could, as long as he can. It'll take about a year drag it out, build up his case, he's got to go 37 for 37, and then run for president. And the best thing he could do, as Adrian said to Rocky after being in her coma for way too long in Rocky II, mm. he said, Rocky, Bye. come here. No? Do you remember? Oh. She, she woke up. And she woke she, up and, and she said, Rocky, He said no. Right, go, go, go <laughs> wait, wait, what's Rocky say? Hey, Rocky II. I don't even know if I watch Rocky II. Bro, I don't watch movies. Rocky II. She said, go fight. Hold on, wait, what? Hold on, let me... Why you do her like that? He said, no, off the rip. And I think I do know what he said, bro. These, that's one of them inspirational joints. Uh, What's Rocky say? Hold on, run it back. What did he even say? Bill Barr said if half the stuff is true about uh, Trump, he's... Oh, shit. And then run for president after being in her car. Way too long in Rocky too. Mm. He said, Rocky, Bye. come here. No. Do you remember? Oh. No. You don't she, remember? She woke up and she woke she, up and, and she said, she Rocky. She said, fight, right? Go nope. fight. Go Steve, do it. Steve, do you remember? <laughs> I I'm like Steve. 45 I'm like Steve. Ago. Okay. I can tell Steve don't know what the hell he's said, talking about. Win. win. And then oh. Nick said, win. what are we waiting for? And if he wins, <laughs> he exonerates <laughs> himself. <laughs> right. And the music starts. You remember that, Chris? Dun -dun -dun. Thank you. You were no help. All right, well, Donald Trump says even Trump says even if he's convicted, he says, I will never leave. He said, this is third world country stuff. You get indicted over nothing, the ridiculous, race. baseless, yeah. most horrific abuses of power in the history of our country. He said that in Georgia, the Republican event. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I mean, I don't know why he had to do her like that. That was kind of messed up. He's like, nope, you're wrong. Yeah, you don't know what to talk about. But hey, my boy Joe Rogan definitely put that in perspective for us, though. Like, the media is extremely left wing. And, you know, anybody, you know, Democrat, left, you know, left wing Democrats, they're going to hide, not shine any light on any of the bad and only, you know, project the good. They're helping the community, building the trust from, you know, the community of citizens. They believe in this person. Nothing that would say otherwise. You know what I mean? And on the other hand, you know, far right, bad, bad, bad. They can't do no good. Yo, <laughs> that was comedy. Yo, that was uh, Fox News on Joe Rogan rips double standard on Trump versus Biden. They will be up his arse. Uh, make sure you guys like this video, man. Subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 10K. Yo, drop a comment. Say what's up. Holla back. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'll catch y'all next week. Wow.